ancient Sri Lanka was a civilization unlike any other. The focal points of the ruling system were the village, the tanks, and religion. Rulers who understood the true meaning of religious teachings pioneered in establishing sustainable development within society much earlier than the Western world understood those concepts. They built an irrigation and agricultural system that would yield plentiful harvest while maintaining harmony with nature. They worked with complex technologies, all the while ensuring that the rights of nature are protected. They understood that they were but temporary guardians of the natural resources of the country and that their duty was to preserve these riches for generations to come. Fast forward several years to 2020, where a Sri Lankan institution specializing in environmental law related research, policy making, and advocacy was established. This was the Center for Environmental Law and Policy, or the CELP. As the Law Goes Green project progressed over the years, the dire need for an organization to educate the community about their responsibility towards the protection and preservation of the environment through environmental law-related research, policymaking and advocacy emerged. As a result of this inspiration, CELP was initiated, affiliated to the Faculty of Law, University of Colombo. The creation of CELP was an idea and concept put forward by its founding director, Dr. Kokila Konasingha. The CELP is continuously guided and advised by its very own expert advisory board that comprises of Justice Sully Marsouf, Professor Dr. Ellen Hay, Professor Dr. Amita Singh, Professor Dr. Sumudu Atapattu, Professor Vasanta Senepiratna. The board of management of the CELP also consists of several leading professionals and experts in the fields of environmentalism, law and science. With the mission to build a platform to research, collaborate, learn and engage in order to build an environmentally conscious society, the Centre has contributed to the growth of environmental law through collaborations, contributions, research and publications on diverse subject matters related to environmental law and policy. The chat on sustainable development goals, the first webinar of its series, was organized by the final year undergraduates of the Faculty of Law in collaboration with the Center for Environmental Law and Policy, Center for Environmental Initiatives, and the EarthMates organization on the 20th of January 2021. The webinar was also graced by panelists Professor Erandati Lokupitiya, Dr. Shyami Puvimana Singha, and Mr. Benjamin Shkeshta, who represented the United Nations Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Project Bajo is a Millennium Fellowship project advancing Sustainable Development Goal 13 concerning climate action by analyzing the laws and policies regarding climate change and environment of the South Asian countries. Dr. Kokila Konasinghe was a co-advisor of the project. Two members of the CELP, Ms. Dulke Sitavaka and Ms. Kitmini Abiropala, were the editor-in-chief and the lead researcher of Team Sri Lanka, respectively. The project was aiming to analyze the scope and legal gaps of national legislations related to climate change in each jurisdiction within the SARC region, to evaluate legal remedies and mechanisms available for addressing climate change, to do a comparative analysis of national legislations of the region with the international legal framework, and to study distinctive practices of each SARC country in combating climate change. In November 2020, CELP took part in a project with the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies to map and analyze the legal preparedness 
for international and regional disaster and pandemic response in South Asia. The purpose of the project was to conduct a baseline mapping of all SARC member states to analyze the existing national laws and policies in light of the provisions of the SARRND as well as the International Disaster Response Law Checklist. It was also intended to examine and make recommendations on regional and international assistance for cross-border public health emergencies focusing on humanitarian channels in South Asia during the COVID-19 response. Dr. Kokila Konasinghe is leading on the Sri Lanka component of the research, while Ms. Dilushi Seniviratna, a member of the research team of SELP, was the research assistant of the project. The research is being conducted in three phases, and the first two stages of the research were conducted to map the legal frameworks relevant to regional and international assistance to disasters in Sri Lanka, and to understand how the legal framework has been applied in practice and to provide recommendations to strengthen regional and international cooperation for disaster and emergency response. Bringing the world's biggest problem to the world's highest court, the world's Youth for Climate Justice or the WYCJ is seeking an advisory opinion from the International Court of Justice to contribute to the progressive development of international law on human rights and the climate crisis. The WYCJ is seeking the support of state and non-state actors in a bid to secure the rights of present and future generations. The founding director of SERP, Dr. Kokila Konasinghe, is the first advisor of the WYCJ Asian Front. Ms. Tulki Sitavaka, member of SERP, holds the position of strategic coordinator for the WYCJ Asian Front. SELP intends to lead the national campaign in Sri Lanka and assist in spreading public awareness about the campaign. SELP submitted a proposal to the expert committee to draft the new constitution of Sri Lanka which contained several suggestions including a fundamental right to a clean and healthy environment, a fundamental duty to protect animals and respect the natural environment and all sentient beings and directive principles of state policy to ensure the maintenance of a sustainable minimum forest coverage through policy making. Raising public awareness on environmental matters has also been one of the center's key areas of focus. To date, several media platforms have been utilized in this regard to discuss contemporary environmental law matters and concepts by members of the center. Animals are a part of our ecosystem and they should have the rights to live their lives free from suffering and exploitation. The concept of fair treatment and respect to animals has been declared in Buddhism and other religions as well. However, Sri Lanka does not have a comprehensive legal framework on this matter. This lack of consideration led to a situation where people view animals as property instead of sentient creatures. Therefore, this publication is an eye-opener to the community to realize the importance of animal welfare. There is a rapid escalation of reported and unreported environmental pollution incidents day by day in Sri Lanka. Nevertheless, Sri Lankan laws on public nuisance are scattered in a plethora of legislation and case law. Hence, this compilation is a timely and noteworthy contribution to legal literature as it fills the lacunae of environmental-related legal materials by compiling the legislative enactments related to public nuisance with all relevant case laws, including the most recent judgments. Ultimately, the publication will help to ensure sustainable utilization and preservation of nature and its resources in Sri Lanka. The South Asian region is rich with its environmental law jurisprudence, marked by the plethora of judgments, focusing on crucial aspects such as the intrinsic connection between a healthy and clean environment to the right to life. Being a region predominantly affected by climate change and where the standard of life is affected daily by pollution and degradation of the environment, the environmental activists, legal practitioners and civil society have rendered an unparalleled service to battle for environmental justice. 
A collection of such prominent landmark judgments and analysis was compiled as the first ever South Asian Environmental Law Report, Volume 1, along with the Center for Environmental Justice, and was launched on the 30th of October 2021. This historic document will be of great use for researchers, academics, students, legal practitioners, judges, and the general public, not only in Sri Lanka, but around the world. South Asian Journal of Environmental Law and Policy, published in collaboration with the Center for Environmental Justice, is the first environmental law and policy journal within South Asia. This journal will be published annually in both print and virtual forms, aiming to create a research platform that will provide prospective solutions to environmental law and policy issues in the region. It will be an invaluable resource and a guide to researchers, students and the general public regarding new developments in the field to identify different legal systems in the region and beyond in a comparative manner and to engage in environmental related initiatives in a meaningful way. Committing to advance the environmental jurisprudence educating and raising environmental consciousness of the public, propagating the notion of the rights of nature and striving to fulfill our obligations to the unborn generations. The journey of the self continues.